Hey, what is going on guys? This is Coded Steel and I would like to welcome you guys to another uh, App Inventor tutorial. Uh, this App Inventor tutorial is not going to cover really um, a lot of new things. Uh, mainly what it's going to be is a, a rehashing of the login screen that I did before except it's going to have a twist on it with a uh, one-time login. This was a request from one of the viewers who had uh, looked at my login screen. He wanted to know how to uh, make a one-time login so that you could log in, well you could register and then you could log in one time and then the app would never ask you again to log in or anything like that. So first let's just kind of go ahead and we'll cover the three screens that I have with this app. First one is a one-time login, which is just a label inside of a vertical arrangement, and then a table arrangement with a username, password, and then user or the uh, regular text box and the password text box, and then a horizontal arrangement containing the, a button that I have labeled register here, but it actually functions as a register and a login button. You'll see how that works in a second. And then I have a database down here as well. And the database is crucial to making it to where the one-time login app works the way it's supposed to work. Screen 2 is nothing special here. It just says you are logged in forever. This will become the main screen after you have logged in for the first and only time ever. That's why it's, this is called the one-time login app. Um, and then, now the third screen is the registration screen, username, Password, confirm username, and it looks like I spelled username wrong, but whatever. Um, confirm username, password, and then confirm password, and then the register button. And then a little notifier tag down here. We'll uh, explain what that does very soon. So, very simple. That's pretty much all there is to it. The uh, This screen will be seen once, and the first screen will be seen, like I think, twice. And then after that, that is pretty much how this thing's going to go down. So, uh, like it's nothing really complicated to understand on the three screens. There's really nothing there. Um, uh, the really what makes this app so complicated is the actual blocks section of it. And you can see that here because in this block section, this is the block section for the first screen, we have three components of it that really involved quite a bit of a... Uh, hashing to make it work the way it does. But uh, let's go ahead and give this a quick going over here. We've got four variables here. One for registered, one for one time, user, and one for pass. User is going to store the username value. Password is going to store the password value. Registered is going to store whether you're registered true or false. One time is going to store whether you're logged in for the first time or not, true or false. So that's basically the way this stuff is going to work. So let's get into how this, the meat and potatoes, I guess, so to speak, of how this app actually works. So when the screen is initialized, which means literally when you open the app, because it will go to screen one by default. So as soon as the screen, this screen is open for the first time, it's going to set the global registered and global one time to whatever's in the database. Uh, when we log into this app for the very first time, there will not be an R or an OT tag. And since there won't be, it's going to set the value of registered and one time to false by default. So since they're false, this if statement's not going to execute. This if statement, and since this if block doesn't execute, it goes down here straight to the else statement, and it's going to set button one text to register and the table arrangement uh, visible to false. So what I mean by the table arrangement being set to false is actually what's going to happen is this username and password field thing isn't even going to exist. It's going to be false. It's going to be empty. It's basically this register button is going to move up and take the place of that. You'll see that when I do the app, how that works. But that's essentially what's going to happen, is that it's just going to pretty much get rid of that from the screen uh, the first time you're going through. So you just see one time, um, one time login and the uh, button for registration. So What's going to happen when the registration button is clicked? Well, like I said before, this button functions as two different types of buttons. It functions as the register button and the login button. So how can it do that? Well, how it does that actually is through this app or through this uh, statement right here, these two if statements right here. 
This makes it function as the registration button. This makes it function as the login button. So if we take a look closely at what happens here, if you're registered, if the registration is false and the one-time login is false, when the button is clicked, just go to the, the screen three, which is the registration screen. So it's gonna jump straight to this screen. Um, so we'll quick take a look at that. Alrighty, come on. All right, so now we're on the third screen. So like I said before, if when you come in for the first time, as soon as I click this button, this is the screen it will go to by default. And it's gonna initialize something called the list. And we have uh, something easy to understand. Whenever you hit the back button, we're just gonna close the application. And the reason we do that is because I don't want the app doing anything un unexpected when the back button is pressed. Usually when the back button is pressed on an app, it will return to a previous screen. I wanted to control that and tell it what to do specifically when the back button is pressed so we can get rid of any unexpected consequences of pressing the back button while you're on the registration screen. So I went ahead and I said, you know what, when you back press, you, we're just gonna close the application, that's it. So that is all it will do. Um, and that way we can control everything that happens in the app. So what are we doing here? Button1.click. When this button is clicked, it's gonna check and see if the text box one and text box two are equal to each other, the past text box and the past text box two are equal to each other. So as we know before, anytime we click on a text box, we can enter in some text. The keyboard will come up and we enter in the text. So when I hit the register button, it's gonna check what's in that field and that field and in that field and in that field and compare these against each other. If these two are equal to each other and these two are equal to each other, then we want to initiate a successful registration. And we initiate a successful registration and we say, you know, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the global list to whatever's in the text box and whatever is in the past text box one here. So why a list? Well, we need to return these values actually to the uh, screen, the main screen. And the reason we do that is because the database, um, App Inventor treats each screen as an individual application, I guess is the best way to explain it. So in order to prevent, or in order not to, pre not to prevent, uh, sorry, in order to make it to where we, uh, hmm, how, to, how to phrase this? Oh, in order to make it to where we can return these values to the screen where they can be handled properly, I guess is uh, the way to say it. Uh, we need to put them in a list and send them back to the main screen. And that's what this statement does. Close screen with res value result, get global the list. Um, why do I need a list? Well, simply put, without a list, I can only return one value to the screen. I can only plug one variable in there to return back to the screen. Um, at least this is the only way I could think of to do it right off the top of my head. There probably is another way to do it with like an if statement or a for loop that'll return stuff. I actually, I think there is, there is an if statement that returns something and there is a for loop to return something. So I'm sure you could work something out with those, but this was the quickest and easiest way I could think of to, uh, right off the top of my head, just return them back simply. So a list, the easiest way to think of it is as a table and I can store depending on how big the list is, which I can make a list really big. I could add like 30 more items to it maybe. And and uh, and I say maybe because I don't know. I think it could be 30. I don't know what the maximum limit of it is. But I know I could add at least 10 to it, and I could return 10 variables back in the same list to the main screen. Uh, in this case, I only need two. So I go ahead and I create a list, and I return. will uh, make, make it to where I can return two results back. Um, the other thing that happens is if these two values are not equal to each other both, um, then obviously the password, the registration did not succeed. So we want to say display a notifier on the screen that says one or more fields do not match and then put a button on the screen for canceling the dialog menu. That's all that's going on on the screen. Once you registered successfully, um, that's it. You go back to the main screen and now you'll be able to log in and enter in your information and make stuff happen. So let's go back to the first screen and then we'll go back um, to rehashing what, what else is going on here. So we talked about what happens here. Uh, this is false, this is false, which they are gonna be both false by default So for the first time you go into the app. So it goes into screen three. After you've registered, if you click the button again, this variable now will be true, but this variable will be false. And since the global one time is false and the global registered is true, um, 
we want to go ahead and check and make sure that the uh, registration password is equal to the password we entered into the text box on the screen one now that'll appear because now that stuff gets set to true I'll explain why in a second and this is true and then if it is go to screen two and then tag that the one time is true so basically when this gets set to true we will never be asked to log back in again and that gets checked over here I'll explain all that in a second um, other screen closed so from screen three when we hit the register button this returns us back to screen one and when we return back to screen one we do this stuff that is in this block so what do we do when we register successfully we store the value this is remember what I said uh, we're returning something that was that list that we had before we're returning that back to the screen so the results gonna come in here it's gonna get stored under the tag username or you I guess I, what I abbreviated it. This is going to get stored under P for password, and then this is going to get stored under R for registered, and it's going to store T, which, man, which means true. And then it's going to set the global username and the global pass to whatever's in the list for result, depending on where the index is in the list, and then global registered to true, and then it'll change the text from register to log in on the screen, and then the table arrangement to true. Uh, reason we have to set that back to true is because remember over here we set it false I said that stuff wasn't gonna appear until after we have registered so now it will appear um, and then now the real magic that makes it to where we'll never go to screen one again is right here the uh, set global uh, registered remember what I said anytime we leave the app we come back this stuff all happens since global registered will now be true it will go ahead and it will read in the values for the username and the password um, and when it does a global user tag you oh yeah yeah okay it'll read in the username and the password uh, I don't know exactly why I do that in here I don't know it's, it's really I guess not needed anymore because once you log in one time I mean that's Oh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is after you log in. So if you left and wanted to log, and you never logged in after you left, it would still want to make sure that you can log in for the first time. But once you log in one time, this stuff is useless in here. But this is needed for the first time login um, if you were to exit the app and come back in. So uh, let's see. Then this statement, why, if global one time is true, then go to the next screen. So let's take a look at this real quick here. And then if not, set it to log in. So this would be like I said before. This stuff is what's crucial to where if you do not log in for the first time, this stuff needs to be here. Um, if any of this fails, we can see if you're not registered, if global register is not true, then we want to set it to register. We I think we covered this before. So we can see what happens here. This is how this is where the magic of this stuff happens here. When the screen is initialized. It'll do all of this stuff is providing global register and global one time are set to true. If these two are true, it's going to immediately call screen two. So none of this stuff really even matters except for this stuff, except to read that you're already registered and uh, and you've already had your one time login. So once this stuff happens, that's it. Um, this will go immediately to screen two. So actually, what happens when you open the app? It'll it will look like you're on screen two right away from the beginning, but you're actually on screen screen one for a very short amount of time, like, but we can't even see it, and you go straight to screen two right after that, and you can do stuff right after that. So, anyways, that's kind of all I wanted to explain about the, how the operation of this stuff goes. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can go ahead and they can send me a message or whatever, but I'm going to show you the actual application now in progress so this is the first screen like you can see here um, remember the table arrangement that was here the reason that's not here is because of this false statement right here when the screen is initialized it's false so this stuff doesn't appear because I have turned around and made it false and not visible by default so now when we hit register we're gonna go to screen 3 which is the registration screen and it does that's exactly where it takes us I'm gonna type in two uh, simple letters here J, uh, and J, and J make it easy 
register. The notifier will say one or more fields do not match, just like we expect it to say, because one or more fields do not match. But if I type in JJ, JJ, it'll all match up now. Now you guys can see, look at that. We're back at the main screen as soon as, okay, that caught up. Um, we're back at the main screen now. And now you can see my button change from register to log in. This is the same screen we were on before, but now um, you guys can see I just left the app. It still will refresh and know exactly where uh, I was at because of the database. It stored the information for the database. So you guys can see here now if I type in J and J, which are what I registered under, and hit login, you are logged in forever. And we really are now logged in forever. I will show you guys that we are. Um, I just closed the app. Let me actually close the app permanently. There we go. Nice and closed all up. Um, anytime I open the app now after this, it's going to automatically say that I am logged in forever. It will never go back to the main screen. I don't even think you can see it. You can see it show the app name when you first start, but it immediately goes straight to screen two because it, it loads so quickly. So you guys can kind of see that that's what actually goes on here. This is how you make a one-time login screen. I logged in once and now I am logged in forever. Um, the only way to possibly reset it to where you can go back is to go under the settings in here and uh, go under the general, go to applications and clear the data for that application. So if I look, I can find it right there. One-time login, I click on it and I just say clear data and say okay. And now the data for that app is cleared. So now it would actually allow me to log in once again because, or actually register, sorry, register first. So I'm just gonna register again. I'm gonna say H, 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 register. We're all registered. Now we just go ahead. And like I said before, I'm gonna show you guys, even if I closed it before I registered it will go ahead and it will function correctly see it takes me straight to logging in because I've never logged in yet so if I went ahead and I registered for the app but I didn't log in it's okay because it's still gonna ask you to log in for at least that one time before it says sorry there's nothing we can do anymore so HH log in and there you go you are logged in forever obviously um, you could do something more creative with this if you were, uh, you know, wanted to. I'm assuming the person that made this request for this part of the uh, app was assuming he was going to do something far greater than this. I hope he does. Um, this is a, pre I can see where this would be pretty handy for a lot of applications. Maybe for like, you're logging into your email and I don't know, maybe you just want to make it to where you log in one time. I, I don't know. Some... I can't really think of a good example off the top of my head because uh, I don't know. I just I just can't. Um, I could think of an example where you could save information, maybe not log you in permanently or whatever. But uh, that's how you create a one-time login. It never asks you again unless you clear the data for the app. You can never undo it. So uh, that is exactly what was requested. If you guys have any questions, please leave any comments below and I will try to answer the questions to the best of my ability. Uh, yeah, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will try to answer some more of your questions in a later App Inventor tutorial. So thanks a lot guys for watching and I will see you guys in your next App Inventor tutorial.